Today I'm working on a no heat call that uses uh, electric heat. When the heat is on, nothing happens. Fan doesn't run and there's no heat. Now when I turn the fan to on, the fan will run. But while the fan runs, there again is no heat. As you can see right here, I am reading zero amps when I put my amp clamp across one of the two heating circuits. Next, I'm going to turn the power off and I'm going to do a ohms check across each of the heating circuits. Both read 11, so I know that there's no opens in either one of these heating circuits. Now, with the power still off, I'm putting one clamp on this heat sequencer at the bottom. The bottom of the sequencer is the 24 volt coil. My other clamp is on the brown wire, which supplies the low voltage to the other side of the coil. Now I'm going to set my multimeter to AC voltage. I would usually just jump out the heat to force it on, but I'm going to use the thermostat. And we have 24 volts across the heat sequencer coil. But you have to be patient when troubleshooting sequencers. Wait at least two minutes because there are delays on these. That's why they're called sequencers. After two minutes though, nothing came on. No heat, no blower. So I determined that this heat sequencer was bad. Now how did I do that? Let's take a look at the diagram. Here's our schematic. This is our heat sequencer, our load of interest right now, and this is our fan relay, which is also a load of interest. This is a 9380. You can see that one of the contacts is normally closed and one is normally open. And if you don't know much about schematics, one thing to look at when you're tracing out wires, that if there's a break in the wire, or in the drawing right here, that means that it is not connected to L1. So we've got L1 that goes through here and L2 is not connected to L1. That's what the break is. Now, if there's a dot, that means that the wire is connected. And don't pay attention to the breaks where it says yellow, yellow common. That's just telling you the color of the wire that is still continuous from this point to this point. Now what I did here is I went ahead and labeled the loads, or I'm sorry, not the loads, the switches, because the sequencer and the fan relay are switches, they are not loads. The heater right here, heater circuit two, heater circuit one, and this is the heater itself. These are the loads. This is what makes the amps come up. I went ahead and labeled, did a drawing and labeled these in Photoshop. So heat strip one, this is the load. Heat strip two, that's your other load. So when we get L2 coming to this side and L1 coming through this side, then the work's gonna be done. Then the amps are gonna start going up. That's the power, that's the work. And also over here, is when red or black, let's say when M1 and common are going to the motor, the motor is going to run. When M2 and common are going to the motor, the motor is going to run. But only one of them can go to the motor at one time. And I'll try to explain this so that we can see what's going on and how I determined just off doing those tests I just did that the heat sequencer is bad. So let's go ahead and trace out L1. This is 120 volt right here. And L2 is also 120 volt. And combined, they are 240 or 208 volt in this case. L1 is going to be the bold black. So it goes up to L1 and L3 of the heat sequencer terminals, which are normally open because we need, we need these to close for it to make it to the heater, but right now they're open. And we have this wire right here. This is piggybacked off the terminal of the heat sequencer. And let's look where this goes. This goes to the fan relay, the normally open side of it. Now let's see what we have with L2. Let's trace that out. L2, 
one half of L2 goes to the fan motor. This is going to be the common for the fan motor. The other half of L2 goes through the limit switch and then to the heat strip. Limit switch and heat strip. I already did a continuity check. The continuity check that I did was from here to here. And I had a full wire from here to here. So I know that this is good and this is good. And the heating element's good. Well, I, I don't know that for sure, but I know that there's not an, an open. I know that there's not a break. Let's start tracing out the low voltage. The low voltage comes from your transformer. We could trace out these wires. I didn't want to color them in. It would just make everything a little bit more confusing. This is supposed to be a very basic under very basic troubleshooting on a schematic. So here's our 24 volt transformer and I'm going to color in the common wire which in this case is going to be brown. So here's our brown. It goes to the blower relay on one side of the blower relay coil then it piggyback whoops sorry about that piggybacks and goes to one side of the heat sequencer. And that's always going to be there. Nothing stops that according to the schematic. That common should always be going to one side of the coil on the heat sequencer or blower relay. Now, if this gets powered by the 24 volt, these contacts right here will close. If this blower relay right here gets powered with 24 volt, this contact will open and this contact will close. So real quick, let's say that we turn the fan to the on position. Let's see what happens with the fan on the on position. And off the thermostat, that is going to energize G. This is going to open because this coil is energized, and then this is going to close. So now we have M1 going to the fan motor, which is going to turn that fan on. This is going to be high speed, I believe. And now our fan is running. Let's turn the fan to off. We're going to take away green, the 24 volt. And W is usually heat. In this case, it is heat. It's a call for heat. Let's turn on W and see what happens. So now we have the white wire going to the other side of the heat sequencer coil, which is going to energize this heat sequencer. Now let's see what's going on. Both of these contacts close. That is going to provide the power to heat up heat up the load. The load's going to be moving now. You're going to have amperage on these. But let's see what else is going on. On this side of the heat sequencer, there's a piggyback wire and this goes through the blower relay on these contacts which is normally closed to the fan motor. That's going to run this fan motor on M2, or medium speed. So how did I determine that the heat sequencer was bad without even checking for voltage? The reason I determined the heat sequencer was bad because the fan motor runs when you put it on green. When, when, when you get a call, because the fan motor will run when you put fan on and the fan motor needs 208 volts to run. So I know I'm getting, I know I'm getting my voltage. And when I put the amp clamp on here, when I put my amp clamp across this heater circuit, when I have voltage to this coil, I should be getting some movement. And the only other reason I wouldn't be getting movement is if these safeties were open or something was open in this circuit, I would still get partial amperage on one of these unless both of them were open. 
And if I have the heat on and I got a call and I, and I force the fan on all the time, not much is going to change just the fan speed because these two contacts right here are just going to switch if I, if I turn the fan on. But my heat is still calling. The W, if I take away the W, then just the fan's going to run. Turn off the power now because I have my new heat sequencer. And now I'm just going to switch these wires to the new heat sequencer in the exact same order that they're in now. And the reason is because I've already looked at these wires and compared them to the schematic. But in this case, a spade on the bigger wire that was going to the blower motor and heat se sequencer broke off. So I can't just put this back on. I have to have a wire with the spade so I just did a pretty quick modification and it's not that big of a modification the wire size is still sized for the amperage it's gonna get and the heat sequencer is all hooked up now I'm gonna go ahead and test it putting my amp clamp on one of the heating stages reapply power and as you can see right here we're pulling 18 amps on heater circuit 1 and also got 18 amps on heater circuit too. So both heating circuits are working. And I know this is a different format than what I normally post. So let me know if you like or dislike this in the comments below. But until the next one, my name's Dave. This fix is done.